we are working on the big weekly harvest just started and this week it's beet greens. Taking 800 heads to the CSA. These are pretty big this yeah, week. So this cultivar is made just to make the beet greens. It doesn't really make a beet. I mean, it makes a little thick thing down there, but it doesn't form an actual beet, which is good or else we wouldn't be able to pull it out of the channel. But they also have these really cool pink roots on them. So a couple years ago, I did a trial of the actual beet in the thing here, and yeah. the beet grew on top of the channel, but it didn't form a bulb. It was like square, it was really weird. It didn't do really well, but. I ended up getting an apron like mom's because I was sick of my shirt getting wet during harvesting. The vinyl, they're so easy to wipe and clean with the Clorox wipe after each use. Look in the channel to see the roots in here. Pink. You're hungry? Yeah. Right, lunch break time. You have extra, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, we'll grab this guy. And I need kale. My favorite way to eat beet greens is in a smoothie. So I have some frozen berries, half a banana, some almond milk, some kale, and some beet greens. I put the stem, the leaf, the whole thing in there. And I'm gonna also put a little bit of this um, plant protein in. I like a little bit of this, make it kind of filling. really good thank you mm -hmm. cheers cheers I can't even tell there's greens in it uh -uh. it just tastes like a berry smoothie to me I know and you put a lot of greens well the beet greens are really sweet and when I put beet greens in I can put kale in dance smoothie and he doesn't know kale's in it because <laughs> he hates kale I love oh yeah I made him a smoothie the other day he's like this is really good and I go yeah put kale in it <laughs> got an idea what how about if I keep harvesting and you work on the tomatoes and the cucumbers for me? Yeah. Okay, good. I really like to brush my teeth after we have smoothies. I got my toothbrush here. I'm just kidding. This is our tomato pollinating toothbrush. We have quite a few flower clusters now and tomatoes are a plant that need pollinated. And outside the bees take care of that, but inside the greenhouse you got to do it yourself. And they do sell these tools that um, vibrate. They're special for pollinating tomatoes or whatever. But we have this old toothbrush and it works fine. Um, and the reason why it looks so gross is because tomatoes leave like a residue. That's normal. But um, yeah, this, this works really good. So all we do is find a flower cluster and then take our toothbrush and just gently touch it onto the stem. That's it. Okay, the toothbrush died, so I'm charging it. 
I still have to pollinate these grape tomatoes, but they really straightened up nice since I clipped them up last week. And I also need to go through and clean them up and get all these suckers off. What do you think? Is that what in the return channel? Yep, that was the return channel. So a couple years ago, I was getting ready to do this exact same job and mom had just gotten this new pair of clippers and she hands them to me and says, be careful, these are really sharp. And I just said, yeah, okay, whatever. Like I just wanted to get the job done and go home. The first cut I did, I about cut off the tip of my finger. So I guess I still need to listen to mom. Oh no, these guys got really out of control. These are way too big for suckers. Gotta stay more on top of them. Still no heads on the broccoli and cauliflower, but the plants are really getting big. And then for the beans, mom's harvested almost 20 pounds so far off of these. So they're doing good. Um, we noticed the leaves some of the leaves are getting a little bit funny looking, but they're on the tomato formula. You know, we only have two tanks for this whole Dutch bucket system, the one there and then that one. And since the cucumbers and the tomatoes are kind of our main crop for the farm market, we focus on them. We run the nutrients for them. So since these are just for us, it's totally fine. And they're still producing fine. This is a good one. Ooh, I haven't looked at the cucumbers on this side. Look at this. These are getting big. Look at that one sitting on top of the bucket. Have you looked at the cucumbers in between the beans? Like on that side? No. There's some big ones. Three? Right there. Oh my gosh. Yum, look at that. I'm so excited. They're mine. Oh, I want one. Mm. I love when they're little like oh, that. Oh, I love this size. That's when they're perfect. You want to cut them off the plant when they first start producing because this way the energy will go to the plant and it will get taller and produce even more longer for you. So even though these aren't the full size, you still want to cut them off? Yes, because the plant will put all its energy into producing these cucumbers here and you want it to put its energy in growing taller so you'll get a longer crop. Yeah, then in the long run, you have more cucumbers. Okay, yeah. But these are my favorite to I eat. Know, I just... I know, I do too. I just eat them. Yes, yum. Mm. Oh, they're so good. I know this probably looks funny, but we do seriously just grab them and just bite them and eat them. <laughs> so I got this other side of tomatoes clipped up again. They're all good to go for now. This one though fell over, so you can tell he's in a bent, but it'll straighten up. Here in the nursery, mom put the flowers out. They were um, all sprouting. Well, some of them sprouting. And a, couple, a few of them look a little bit leggy, but they should start doing pretty well, especially with this grow light. So hopefully um, we get some good flowers here because I'm really getting excited to get the baskets going and for spring to finally come. I'm so used to the Asian greens and all that that sprouts up so fast. I always forget how long like peppers and flowers take to germinate. There's dandelion greens here. These are gonna go in two weeks. Um, they're getting really big. They like the nice sunny days we've been having. And the endive right here goes next week to the CSA. And then in three weeks in this bay over there, that's Carlton. Here's a better look at it. It's just a good crunchy green for salads or cooking or whatever. This little stuff down here is Swiss chard, and there's 900 heads of this. Mom got this seeded after we found out we needed to bump up the order to 900 heads, so we're gonna have a lot of work to do. So the second crop from my desktop NFT system is about ready, and Mom said I could grab some seeds. I wanna try my favorite lettuce. This is called Muir and um, it's a leaf lettuce, so I'm hoping it'll do well. Well, I think I'm gonna head out, go get planes. Okay, sounds like the plan, sweetie.
Thank you for helping me. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for the cucumbers. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, so I also grabbed a couple Oasis cubes too because I have something really cool that got delivered to the house today and I want to get it planted as soon as possible. Ooh. So this is from Pepper Joe's. Pepperjoes.com and I ordered some habaneros and some Carolina Reapers. And Carolina Reapers are supposed to be the hottest pepper in the whole world. So we're gonna try to grow these hydroponically. Habanero, and then I got some free ones. Looks like Alma Paprika, Trinidad Scorpion, nice. I also wanted to get these mirror lettuce seeds planted too because my stuff downstairs is getting pretty big. The bib lettuce is actually looking a little bit better than the last round. It's kind of forming a little head, but the bok choy, Ever since I accidentally let it dry out, the bottom leaves are just kind of dying and shriveling up. So I don't know. I think I'm gonna pull one out. Letting these dry out was not good for the roots as we probably could have all guessed. These look like the old ones, the old roots down here. They're kind of brown. And then this looks like new growth up here. It's nice and white. So just can't let that happen again. Okay, I got my growing medium all ready and it's all soaked. So I wanna use up that rock wool that came with my desktop NFT system. I'm gonna put the mirror seeds in here for downstairs. And then I'm gonna do three Carolina Reapers and three Habaneros. And these are going to end up going back out to the greenhouse and going to the high tunnel. I'm just going to put these over here for now to live. And I just have to make sure they don't dry out. All right, so mom and dad toured this greenhouse over a year ago. And um, it's only about 45 minutes away from the farm. But it's one of the largest greenhouses in the United States. It's over 100 acres, all under glass and they supply tons and tons of orchids, um, succulents, and other kinds of house plants. Um, they do have a lot of workers, but a lot of it is automated. Place is called Green Circle Growers in Oberlin, Ohio. And hopefully things go back to normal soon so we can start doing fun tours and stuff like that again and visit neat greenhouses. Well guys, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave those for me. And thanks for watching.